This is the American Wing Girls Modeling Podcast, episode number two. Podcasting live from Northeast Texas, the home of the Cowboys, Cowgirls, Texas Country Music, and beautiful Texas Sunsets. This is the American Wing Girls Podcast, a weekly podcast about the modeling and promotional industries. And now, here's your host, friend, and business branding expert, Paul Robertson. Well, welcome to this second episode of the American Wing Girls Modeling Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Robertson. And today I wanted to do um, a small recap and response to the interview I did with Frankie Osborne in the first episode. Uh, There were a lot of great pointers and tips that Frankie shared with us that I wanted to go in a little bit more detail and give my personal opinions about and talking more in detail um, because I think they're very important and I think they're worthy of having their own episode uh, where I talk about them. Uh, The first point I wanted to talk about was uh, starting your own promo modeling agency. Now from just talking to various girls in the community and uh, you know and talking to models most girls aren't in California or New York or Florida Texas um you know, where there's more work for girls to find, but they're in small towns, small markets in the Midwest or, um, you know, basically they're in places where there's not a lot of work or promo going on that they know of. There aren't a a lot of modeling agencies hiring and, you know, or they don't even know that they're there. And so, um, a lot of Girls are trying to figure out what can I do to get into promo? How do I start doing this? You know, what is it that um, is available to me to do? Well, one of those, uh, an answer to that that I think that you should really consider is starting your own promo agency. Now, I know that that sounds like, wow, I don't even know how to do promo. So how in the world am I going to start a promo agency? Well, that's what some of the things I want to talk about today um, to give you some suggestions, some ideas. You know, there really there isn't a uh, blueprint uh, set b- blueprint for you to just follow. A lot of this is just thinking outside the box and being creative and going out and making making things happen for yourself. Um, when you don't fit, when you're in a small market, what you have to do is basically create your own market, just as Frankie did here in Northeast Texas. What you'll find is there are a lot of opportunities out there, but even the opportunities themselves. And when I say opportunities, I'm talking about businesses and um, well, local businesses and maybe even regional businesses that, that they don't know that you're there. They don't know any marketing agencies or promo agencies that they can contact um, to do promo and they actually are looking for someone to do these things for them and if you will just talk to people network and 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 just you know network with the businesses you will find opportunities are there that you never would have even thought of and Frankie talks about her own experiences and how opportunities are just coming out of everywhere now She's having opportunities come from out of the country. People are contacting her wanting to do various projects. So to answer the first problem that this this com- that comes up with this is, you know, I've never done any promo. So how am I going to start a promo agency? Well, remember, if you listen to the first episode, I, I talked about being willing to travel. Well, like I said, this is a business. This is not just a getting a job. This is a business. So if you would invest a little in traveling to where some of these jobs are to get some experience doing promo, when you come back to your market, you're the expert. You know what you're doing, even though you may not have as as much experience as some of the girls who have done this for years and years. But, but promo is not like an overly complicated process. Once you figure it out, you got it. So you might want to travel to get the experience and then come back home and then start talking to to businesses about, you know, what is their marketing efforts? um, How successful are they being? You know, would they consider uh, hiring a promo business to do some marketing for them? You know, 
Um, and that's basically all a, mar a modeling agency and promo agency does is they are representing a business or a, what's, you know, a client that wants to be represented in a certain way and they don't have the time to do it and hire girls or people themselves. So they outsource that to a different company. Well, if you start your own promo business and you go talk to other girls and train them about how to do some promo because you now understand what is involved. Or if you find girls who themselves have done some promo, now you have your promo team in place and you can talk to talk to these businesses. And the way business works is that this business owner knows that business owner. So if you do some work for this person, they're going to talk to their friends and their colleagues and say, Hey, you need to hire this company because they do good work. And next thing you know, you have a new business, you know, contacting you about doing an, another promo. And next thing you know, that business is telling this business. So what happens is a networking effect happens and businesses will start to find you and contact you through Facebook, through your website. If you have one, uh, or just calling you have, if you have business cards, spreading those business cards out. I mean, this is, this is what the business world is all about. It's about relationships that you build with the people who have the money and the people who have the money are the owners and managers of these companies looking for someone to represent them. Maybe they have a marketing, uh, idea that they want to do or an advertising um, campaign that they're running and they need talent to represent them um, in a way they want to be represented. So this is the same thing that Frankie has done here in Northeast Texas. This is not a very big market in the terms of like a Dallas or, or a California you know, or New York. Around Northeast Texas, there aren't, you know, major companies doing a lot of uh, marketing campaigns around here. Um, but she finds herself very, very busy because there's a lot of bands in this area that hire her. There's a lot of companies that hire her, um, that, that have their products locally. Um, there's a lot of like a uh, venue type businesses hiring her to work events. So, I mean, what, ha what has happened is because she's she's doing good work. She's networking. She's talking to people and she's, um, on Facebook. She's on, she has her own website. She has built a market for herself. Um, and that's not even to mention the bars, the convenience stores, um, the clubs. These are, these are always venues that are looking for someone to do promo for them, obviously, because you see that online. You see that on our website, middle light girls and, uh, but light girls. Well, those girls are getting hired by um, by that company to per, to represent their company. Well, you're basically doing the same thing. You're just doing it. You know, you're just being systematic and organized about it. You're you have your own brand that companies contact you, and on a smaller scale, you're representing their company. So that is an option that you should explore if you are having trouble finding work in your area. Sometimes you've got to create that work for yourself and you may find that there's more work than you can handle and you start to grow and you have to start hiring a lot more girls and then you start to expand. Well, the key to this is going out and getting some experience. And if that involves traveling, think of it as just an investment in yourself and in your company because you're traveling to get experience and to learn. But when you have to have that experience and you learn, you can now use it to build a market for yourself and then for other girls in that market that are looking for work as well. Um, I also want to talk about um, how to handle your first job. Um, Frankie talked about her first experience working, the fact that she was nervous and how she handled it. Well, what I want to say is even if you've served tables or you're a bartender or you've been in some kind of social job like that, it's doing promo is very similar, if, especially if you are one of those in one of those positions. You have a leg up uh, on a lot of people because you are already you know, knowledgeable about how to talk to people, how to represent yourself at the tables or at the bar. Um, you already have experience 
you know, doing promo, you're promoting the, the restaurant, you're selling their food. So, you know, or their alcohol, if you're at the bar or, or whatever the case is. So if, if you have, if you haven't been a server or a bartender, it's still, it's, it's, it's all about comfort and the more comfortable you are, the better you're going to represent yourself in the company. The more you have fun, but not the crazy wild fun where it's, you know, if everybody's looking at you like you're, what's wrong with this person but just the good natured fun um lively the life of the party type personality um that's that's what you need to do you know on your first job try not to be so nervous and just think of it as you know what i'm 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 going to make some mistakes but it's all right i'm going to have a good time you know and this is going to be fun i'm going to learn i'm going to just talk to people and tell them you know the truth this is you know i'm a, i'm a I'm a doing I'm a promo girl. Um this is my first time, but you know what? Let's do this. Let's have a good time, you know. And it's it's that's how you handle the first job. You just can't take yourself so seriously or let the moment overwhelm you. You just got to say, "Hey, you know, this is just like any other job you start. You're going to be nervous." So, but when you get on there, people are going to help you or if you're by yourself, just do the best you can. And then what's going to happen is you're going to learn whether you do bad things or good things or or things that you didn't think you could do, but you've done them. Guess what? You know, that's experience and you're going to build on it. And the next time you do it, it's going to be easier. It's going to be more fun. And the next time you're going to know exactly how you want to handle different situations and how you want to talk to people. So it's just about getting your feet wet, jump in there and, and just smile the whole time, have a good time. And that'll cover up most of the mistakes that you make because they understand that you're having a good time and they want to have a good time with you. Um, for those of you who are really thinking about starting your own agency, your promo agency, we talked a lot about in that first episode about the street, the three strikes rule. And you have to have this rule in place if you want to run an agency with the girls that you hire. And I'm going to be honest with you. When you're dealing with girls of this age, you are going to run into a lot of flakiness and it's just something that is just the way it is. It's something that big companies deal with and small companies deal with. You know, the big promo agencies, they go through a lot of people because the biggest problem you run into is flakiness. You have a girl, she's supposed to show up to some event. She doesn't show up or she shows up late or she's giving you excuses about why she can't be there. You know, even though it's in, in time for you to find someone else. You know, flakiness and unreliability is the major problem. So what you have to do is have a line drawn in the sand. And I talk about this in that first episode. You have to draw the line in the sand before you hire them. Let them know up front. This is how I operate. If you if you don't go by my rules, I'm going to fire you. Not in a negative way, but it's just I can't afford to risk my reputation on your flakiness and so you need to know this up front so that when you do these things you're not looking at me like i'm the cruelest person in the world or i have no heart because you have a family and a child to feed and you you know you need this job you know what i told you the deal before it happened you didn't follow the rules and now i have to protect my business or i won't have a business because it doesn't take long to have a reputation ruined and that's something i learned the hard way um not that i lost my business but it was just that you find that just like people talk about your business in a great way they can also talk about your business in a bad way so you have to be very uh, you know image focused and so and just like your image focused those girls should be also image focused as well they need to be thinking about their own reputations um about how people view them you know that is that goes a long way in this business especially but in all business you know if you're planning on being a professional you need to be focused on these things um because your employers do watch and they do pay attention and they don't want to be embarrassed so put that pl that plan in place have it written down talk to them about it and make sure they understand that before you hire them that way when if something happens you don't have to feel bad about what you're doing you can go to you can go straight to them and say look i we, we discussed this you understood you did this 
you've done it three times. I got to let you go. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike you personally. I mean, and it may be that you're already been friends. It's like, we're friends. I hope you don't want to not be my friend after this about this, but I got to run my business a certain way. And you knew that I can't make exceptions for you. You know, if you get things straightened out, maybe we can do this later. But right now I got to find somebody else that I can depend on day in and day out. So, um, just have that plan in place, y'all. Another thing I want to talk about was business skills. And Frankie talked about her involvement in the Mary Kay business, which kind of not established her business skills, but it kind of built upon her business skills because as she talked about how she got her first job, she was doing a really great in sales um, in her first job before she started doing promo. Um, and it was those, those, that job, uh, her ability to sell and her, her personality that allowed her to do well in, in Mary Kay. But when you're dealing with Mary Kay and you're making the money, I, I, I don't know what kind of money she was making, but I've heard stories about what they do. And she mentioned she had won some cars from her efforts. It lets you know that you have to be able to manage money. Um, you have to be able to, um, you know, just conduct business in on a large scale. And so what I'm, I wanted to talk about today is you need to find a way to develop your business skills. And that's relationships, that's networking, that's money management, that's employee management, that's time management, which is a crucial one. Um, it's about building a, re, a reputation for yourself. It's a, it's a whole list of things that you need to be focused on to develop your business skills. But it was two key things she talked about that I really want to mention here. She talked about finding a need. If you think about it, if you look at your market and you look at your businesses, what you can do is go talk to the owners and managers of every business in town that you can get get to, you know, uh, uh, some time to talk to a manager. Ask them, what are your needs? What is it that you're needing to do or uh, to accomplish? And let's see if there's a way for me to help you meet those needs. If you think about it, if if you went to a car dealership and you asked them, what are you trying to do and what are you trying to accomplish? And it, and is there a way for me to help you do that? Well, now you're talking business because you're not going to that, that dealership saying, hey, hire me, uh, give me this, give me that. You're saying, let me help you. Then you help me. <laughs> you get it? You You're helping them help you find a need. I, I loved it when she said that, and I really want to talk about it more in that podcast, but I knew we have so much more to talk about, so I didn't go into it deeper. But this is key to all business. Everything you, that you do in business should be centered around solving needs, solving problems. Um, here's an example. Say there's a bar in town. It's new, old, or whatever the case may be, but they're having problems getting people in the bar they're not they're not making the sales. They're maybe even in trouble of losing, you know, their business because they're not making enough liquor sales. If you went into that bar and you talked about, "Hey, let's let's uh let's throw an event. Let's get the word out uh about the event and let's get people in here and you know, let's get your bar full for the night. And while those people are at the bar, let's really market to those people. Let's do some promos. Let's do some things to get them excited about coming to your bar. And that'll help get business up from where it is right now. That'll make you money. That'll get the word out. And then, and then we'll go from there. Well, do you think that bar is going to be interested in talking to you about doing some business, about doing some promos? You want, you are the one who came to them about helping them do the sales. And then you are telling them, I have a promo company and I want to help you. Guess who they're going to hire to do their promos? You. So it's all about finding a need. That's just one example. There's so many opportunities out there right now with businesses struggling the way they are that they're 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 the most of them are open to suggestions, to ideas about how to get their business up. And a lot of times it's about networking. It's about getting the word out to their demographic of people that they're trying to get into their business, their customers, you know. And if you can find a way, especially with Facebook being available to you, to get word out for them, they're going to be a lot more interested in doing business with you because you're making their money. You're helping them grow their business. Um, so 
find a need in your community in your businesses that are local to you and you may find yourself with a lot of work and a lot of promos to do another thing she talked about was never giving up and basically what we what we were discussing was you have a lot of people who who will try something once and then it didn't work so i'm done this is a this is this is a scam this doesn't work this is you know i can't do this whatever if you if you go in with that attitude, especially in business, you're going to fail because this isn't a guaranteed thing. This is this is something that you got to make it work. You got to work it. You know, I mean, I'm and I'm no pun intended, but you do. You have to work it. It's 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 something that you have to you have to have some grit. You have to have some guts to go through it and and. It's there's a saying, you know, if you're willing to do what others aren't willing to do, then you're going to be able to do what others aren't able to do. And what that means is if you do um, the work, if you go out and you talk to businesses and you and you, you know, you find a need and you help them solve that need. Well, you're going to be in a situation where you're getting the work and you're making the money where and. Now you're making enough money that you can go on vacations when you want where other people can't because they're still trying to find a job or they're still trying to work on a job that's not going anywhere. But you're building a business. So if you're willing to do what others aren't willing to do later on, you're going to be able to do what they're not able to do. And that's live a life that you want to live. So it's never giving up. It's it's having some grit about yourself. It's it's some fortitude. You know, if it not, if three businesses say no to you, go to the fourth. If the fourth say no, go to the fifth. Eventually, a business is going to say, oh, you know what? I do have this problem. How can you help me? How much do you charge? Let's do some business. And that's what that what, what we were talking about. And finally, just to to beat this to death, it's all about how you represent yourself. If you have a bad reputation it's going to be hard to do business with people because they don't want your reputation to ruin their reputation so whatever you're doing on facebook whatever you're doing out in public you know the way you conduct business the way you dress the way you talk everything matters you got to represent yourself the way you want people to perceive you if you're going out every day in your pajamas you know, to the grocery store or whenever you 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 know what i'm saying you you you're not dressing up you're not you know, you know, you're just there, you know, that's a lot different than dressing up every day, getting in, you know, wearing those high heels that hurt, <laughs> you know, dressing in business suits, having your hair and nails done right and going and, 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 and doing the normal things. But when people see you, they see, oh, this woman is professional. This woman is, you know, she really uh, takes care of herself. She really, she's very image focused and all that. People take you more seriously by the way you dress. That's just a simple um, tip in business. The way you dress is the way people will perceive you. If I dress in a suit, people are going to perceive me. Oh, okay, this is this may be a businessman, but if they see me in a jumpsuit, you know, a Nike jumpsuit, they're going to look at me like, hmm, maybe this is an athlete, and you know, maybe this is just. Well, some bomb somewhere, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it really does come down to how you represent yourself, but for you ladies in Northeast Texas, or, or you ladies that are really interested in starting your modeling agency and you want to kind of have some, a, uh, example, you can go to the Texas young guns, uh, which is Frankie's modeling agency here in Northeast Texas. Um, you can go to their Facebook page at, uh, I will just put a link at the bottom of this page, um, to their profile on, um, their, actually their Facebook fan page. And then I will put a link to their website and you can contact her. Um, if you need to, if you go to the first episode, uh, I have her email address on that, on that show notes, um, on that page with the show notes on it. Um, and if you want, she'll answer your questions for you. She's, she's very friendly. She's very energetic. She's very, um, positive. So she's in the community. So just find, find her and talk to her and ask her, what did you do? And you know, what, what, what are some more tips or whatever you have? But 
that's it. That's what I want to talk about today in the second episode of this podcast. I want to do some recap and going deeper into some of the things we talked about. And I hope that you girls are getting some value out of these podcasts and that you are beginning to see some opportunities that you may have in your own communities, in your own markets. And if you haven't like our Facebook page, um, we have ways for you to like it here on the website. If you're on iTunes, you can go to AmericanWingGirls.com and you can find a way to connect with us there. We have a community, so please, um, if you if you need to or you want to join us, it's free to join. We have a Facebook group. Um, we have a I'll have a link to that um, on the bottom of this um, podcast and um basically we're just one big community of people who are have a passion and interest in modeling and promotional modeling and photography you know we just we're trying to help each other and i am trying to interview people who are being successful so that you can get an idea of how you might be able to get started and how you can be successful doing the same thing and that's it if you're in itunes uh we're there please subscribe and leave a positive review um i will leave a link to the itunes where you can subscribe there um, below this this podcast as well so um that's it i will see you in the next episode thanks for listening to the american wing girls modeling podcast if you like what you just heard we hope you'll pass along our web address www.americanwinggirls.com to your friends and colleagues be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts this has been an american wing girls production join us next time for another edition of the american wing girls podcast